Good, good. Here's me wanting to start off the episode with a little bit of building of the church. And now, right on cue, we get ourselves a group of bandits. The wife of El Kip is here. Oh, oh, well, that's barely anybody. Is there multiple? Is that it? Really? Okay, fine. Um, we are being raided by the dwarves. Um, oh, they actually have varying weapons this time. Look at this. They've got uh, shields, swords, peelers, um, axes. Uh, one of them's got throwing spears, and that's basically it. Uh, we've got one mage amongst them as well. Oh, a druid. You guys have told me that the druids are insanely good. So this is the person we need to knock down and take prisoner. Now, are you also... No, you're not the wife of... We need to be careful not to kill our kid's wife, because I feel like we'll never forgive us. How are we going to capture you? Because every time we go into combat, we always just end up straight up murdering the poor fools. Right, squad up. This is a raid, not a siege. They are attacking immediately, so let's get on our ballista. And let's see what damage we can do here, team. Right, now I have installed, as you can see here, the extra speed mod. I said I was going to do that last episode and didn't. Just so the building, I can get out of the way very, very quickly. And we can focus on the more important stuff during the episode. Because, you know, I'm sat here for hours on end recording this stuff. And I'm feeling like I'm getting nothing done. So at least with speed 4, I can blast through the building stuff. We can keep all the cool stuff in. Um, and it's not going to take me hours and hours to record it. Right, so, the dog, my dog, get on a crossbow. Morrison, oh, hang on, you're quite powerful. Jim Morrison, stay there. Um, you're also quite powerful. Dwali, you are top tier terrible. Get on the crossbow. Um, you're also terrible. Get on the crossbow. And basically, we're just going to man all the crossbows. That's essentially the plan, right? Um, Croesus can stay there. What about, uh, basically, any non-magical people, get on the crossbow. Right, there we go. Moss as well. You're on the final crossbow, and that should be a pretty goddamn good lineup, I think. Um, well, why can't you... Why can't he man that cross? Oh, I've already got someone manning that one. Uh, oh, I didn't man the middle one. Right, there we go. Classic mistake there. Okay, here we go. They're in range. Open fire, team. Take them out. Could we maybe set the force to... If they attack my inn, I'm going to be very annoyed. Melee attacking wooden quarry platform. You're going for my goddamn inn? I mean, they're not going for the inn, but they are going for stuff near the inn. I'm not very impressed with that. Right. Hold the line, men. Oh, Jesus Christ. Please don't instantly kill the druid. Where is the druid? Right, he's there. So we obviously want to send in somebody who's fairly weak. You know what? A ranged weapon would do well against the druid. That's probably what we want. We want to knock him down. We obviously don't want to kill him. Okay, well, these guys we want to kill. Um, these guys can get fucked. But everyone else, though. Hey, that worked out really well. Holy shit, Nolan's down. Are you good? Mining, cooking. I'll take that. That seems very... All the dwarves tend to have either mining or cooking. Right, wait for these guys to start fleeing. Then we are absolutely... They're fleeing. Right, now we go for that druid. Where is he? He's there. Search and destroy. Um, we will use range when we get a bit closer. Can we just knock him down? Sonic Blast. What if we fire that near it? Um, we could also go like... Hmm. Is there any way we could just like stun them? That's all I want to do. I don't want to kill the damn things. Um, right, let's go on speed one here. Because I do need to be very careful. Block the exit. Just block the exit, my dude. Right, stay there. Attack the druid. Which one's the druid? Kiss? I think Kiss is the druid. Right, open fire. Elkip, you cannot be trusted. You can body block him by all means, but you cannot be trusted. Knock him down. <gasps> Knock him down. Knock him down. Stunned. That's what I like to see. Right, pull back. I don't want him dead. I don't want him dead. I just want him stunned. We just want him stunned, for fuck's sake. Okay, careful. <gasps> Shit, killed him. Careful, careful, careful. Don't kill him. Don't. Please don't kill him. Please, please don't kill him. Just knock him down. Fuck's sake. Every time. Every time we end up just straight up murdering them. I can't win. Okay, well, Insane Nigel is the only one who actually got injured that entire raid. Oh, he gassed it as well. Um, you boys just get yourself healed up very quickly. Everyone has to go. But how am I going to do this? I feel like I just need to give everybody, like, maces or warhammers. I mean, I've said this before. I'm going to go for... Wait, the whole warhammer initiative. Are we still on that? Yeah, we are. We've got warhammers being produced. Good. So I'm going to make sure everybody's equipped with a goddamn warhammer rather than a sharp killy weapon. Um, is there any sort of, like, stun ranged weapon? I know it's a weird thing to ask. Um, what else have we got? The Morning Star... Uh, what does that do? I need damage per second. We just want something that will knock them down. I don't want to kill the poor guys. So we need some replacement undead, because undead berg is not really making much progress here. Um, I do like the idea I saw a comment saying you should build a barrow instead. That's a really, really good plan. I, I do like the idea of having some, like, barrow whites kicking around. So what I'm going to do is, I think I'm going to resurrect, was it this dude here? I have really good stats. Uh, we're looking for somebody with cooking, plants, construction, anything really. Uh, generally, all of them are good. Yeah, this was the dude. So cooking, plants, animals, shooting as well, very high there. So we, when he gets on the crossbows, hopefully it'll be a bit more useful. So I'm actually going to go ahead and raise that guy there. But, oh, shit, we raised two. Ah, uh, that's not ideal, because I think his mana rate is not enough for that. Uh, we'll see. If it, if it increases, then... Oh, yeah, it is going up. Okay, that's fine, then. We can just about sustain that. So, Torlil and Gloin. Um, I forgot it was AoE. I didn't realize that at level 1, though, it raised more than one corpse. So, let's get these boys some jobs. 
Um, essentially, it's just going to be the same thing as every other undead. In fact, what we might as well do then is take the dog. Where is the dog? Copy him and paste it into Torlil and was it Gloin as well? There we go. So just having them building, growing, that's all their jobs are. And then we also want to restrict them to Undead Berg as well. So we want Torlil. I'm going to need some names for these boys as well. That would help out a lot. If you guys have got any name suggestions for our Undead Army, feel free to suggest them. We also need some for um, Dwali. Moss as well. I think I've used all the Patreon names. If I haven't, please feel free to let me know. But I will double check that, and then we we, do, we will have some names spare though. So feel free to suggest them in the comments, and I will uh, I'll happily name some boys. Speaking of people, we can name people after prisoner containment. Hey, that's pretty useful. So that's going to make it easier to keep people uh, suspended in the future because we have had suspended. Is that the right word? Um, What's the word? Detained. Detained is the right word. It's going to make it easier to keep people detained in the future. We had to have a couple of prison breaks. Um, you boys should be... Oh, I was going to say focusing on the farm, but actually, I mean, the farm is basically what we need to be. They're growing hay grass right now. I'm going to offload some of the growing jobs onto those boys. In fact, does any of them... Uh, do you have good plant skill? Hang on, gear? Uh, bio? Uh, plants, plants, plants. Nine plants. Ten plants. They can grow Devil Strand then, can't they? And that's exactly what the colony is missing right now. So let's go ahead and expand zone. Um, put it, put it, put it there, pal. Right, okay, uh, Devil Strand, we need that for making the higher level of scrolls, so we go ahead and have them working on Devil Strand, they should start working on that immediately, the ones that can, and then what we'll also do is, obviously, till the floor as well, so on tilled soil, do, 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 do. there we go, alright, so that's actually quite a big Devil Strand farm, to be honest with you, um, I might even expand it a little bit more, because I'm feeling quite greedy, especially if these scrolls are good as well, we want as much land as possible, and then we use the rest of this, we probably want to have, um, reclaiming soil as well, or the ability to reclaim this and, and grow crops on it. That would be very good to research. In fact, I should probably queue that up at some stage. What is it called? Um, in fact, I don't even know if we can get it. Ah, oh, terrain re rehabilitation area. So we'll put that one on the list as well. Shouldn't take too long. Um, and then we'll get those done as soon as possible. And this can basically just be turned into a big undead farm. It's a bit wholesome. Oh, that's what it is. That's what it is. Imbues the user with an arcane spirit. Oh shit, that's how you make new wizards. You just make a gem? We can turn everybody into a friggin' wizard now. This is so good. Okay, so basically we just, we're just going to convert everybody who's not a wizard into a wizard. Can we make undead wizards? I doubt it because they're undead, so it already counts as a class. Alright, so uh, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm just also checking down here. Eight non-wizards. It's quite simple what we do from now on. Um, minor gem. What is it? Major gem of arcane insights. So we need crafting six intellectual check ten. Oh shit, really? For that? I was kind of expecting it to be the... That's the same as a level... Oh, but wait, there's less than a level 1 gem. Do we want to make them all wizards? I mean, of course we do. We can make them physical inside, but that seems a bit boring. So make... How many of these do we want? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Was it 9? Uh, so it's just all of these ones, I believe. So 8 of them. Because uh, Bonnet's already, already a wizard, obviously. Oh shit. Well, this has just um, blown the game wide open. Now, we've also got a bamboo scribing table so we can make people into um, wizards as well. Now, we can also check our other spells. Man, there's so much to do now. This is cool. Lich form. Tran teaches the necromancer how to transform into a lich. Crafting four, intellectual 14. Resurrection. That's so much better than Bonnet Big Lich. So, for our actual colonists, the resurrection is, is supreme. For making the undead army, obviously, we'll just use the lich power instead. Um... Oh man, there's so much. There's there's too much. There's too much. This this is what we've missed out on the entire game, right? I really should have done this a lot earlier. Unfinished arcane book teaches them a random class, right? Oh no, it's unfinished torn script makes them a random class. I actually don't remember. Um, gifted pawns can join their theories and experiments in this book and learn to become a random mage class, or use a trained mage to record their arcane secrets. At which point they'll become the same class, right? Um, what's the difference between a torn script and an arcane book? Um. I don't really know what the difference is. I mean, this one clearly costs a lot more. Uh, and this one also uses Devil Strand. What does that do, then? And it has a much higher level. They have exactly the same... They have exactly the same description. So I honestly don't know. I mean, I feel like we should probably make these ones, right? So we'll go ahead and make uh, six of these. Uh, uh, well, no, it was eight of those as well. And then we want to probably also see what these new spells have got going for us. So we've got... Uh, did I see that? Where was it? Regrow limb. Boom. Give me that shit. Um, blood mage spell, blood moon. Um, teaches the blood mage how to summon a vicious pack of demons. Arcane gateway. Oh, this is cool. Okay, obviously, grow limb. We need a druid. We need a druid in the colony. Someone who can help regrow everybody's limbs. Even two druids actually might be a really good idea. Geomancy spell, meteor. 
That sounds cool. Um, we've got Blizzard. We've got... Uh, look for things that are new. I have the Storm is definitely new. Um, I think teaching everyone how to summon, uh, uh, like, additional creatures. I forget what they're called. Minions, that's it. Summon minions. Definitely something we should probably churn out, like, ten of those scrolls and just have everybody learn it. That way we'll have a lot of extra farmhands, cleaners, that type of thing, like I said before. Probably a really, really good idea. And immediately he's starting work on that. And it doesn't take that long to produce them either. This might be a little bit OP, but it's going to be cool. So what is it that they cost again? Um, it was like 500 Magicite, wasn't it? So it's incredibly expensive. 650. Oh, no, wait. It was 500 Unrefined Magicite. Um, how much do we have in storage? We've only got enough to make three of those. Okay, hang on. And, and the scrolls cost Magicite as well, don't they? Yeah, okay. So hang on. Let's pause a second and think where we want to spend our resources. Um... Because this is way more expensive than I realized it was. So let's just have him churn out one for now and see if it works as intended. We might want to just focus on making our current mages stronger. Um, hmm. All right, hang on. Let, let's, let's wait and see. Gem of Arcane Insight. Who deserves to be a mage or specifically a druid more than Potts himself? This entire game, he's been helping everyone else out. He's been our doctor. He's been our cook. He's got a cooking skill of 20.09. He's gone above and beyond. He's got a plant skill. You know, Druid, healing and plants just seem to suit him perfectly. Medical skill, I mean, is he absolutely the right guy for this? Use that. Boom. Is he now, is he now arcane gifted? Uh, um, what? <laughs> did that even fucking do anything? Um, what, what did that do, my dude? Maybe he's got an extra trait and we just can't see it because generally the game only has three traits. Let's assume that's worked. Current Herbal Doctors, Corrupt Alchemist. Oh, and he's also Cor Corrupt Alchemist and Herbal Doctor already, so, you know, that makes sense. Um, I'm going to take a wild assumption that that's worked. It hasn't just, like, equipped it. No, okay. So, we'll, again, assume that's worked. Let's try and make ourselves the uh, the Druid Arcane Book. Now, unfortunately, it's only going to be random, isn't it? Unless we actually get ourselves a Druid. So, let's go to the crafting station, or the scripting station. Maybe we just want to make these, then, seeing as I don't know what the difference is. Could become a random mage class. Okay, let's just produce one of these then. So patches, um, oh, pot, sorry. Go back to producing one of these. Let's see if we can get him druid. If it's good, I might just go for it because obviously the resource cost for this is quite heavy. So if it's all right, we'll probably just roll with it. Um, if it's a fairly good class, but if it's, if it's obviously druid, druid is the one we want. Um, what do we get? Birdskin unfinished torn script. What does that mean? Um, can he just use that now? Right, <gasps> here we go. Okay, so go ahead and consume a lavish meal. Let's queue this up and see what we can actually do with this. Hopefully it won't make him into a class without us getting a choice, a final say in it. Hopefully he'll produce like a Book of the Alchemist or whatever. Arcane script, question mark, question mark, question mark. What? Oh, so this is the random class. Oh, shit. Okay, read. What is he? Is he a, he's a summoner. <gasps> he's a summoner. Okay, that's pretty good. That's actually very, very cool. I kind of like that. Um, Summon defensive pylon. What is that? Uh, summon his minion. Yeah, can we summon the pylon, though? It needs more mana. Hey, summoner could have been a lot, lot worse. And now we can summon Poppy? A pack of vicious Poppy from the Gates of Insanity. Right, okay. Well, I think it'll be a safe bet to basically do that with every pawn whenever we can. So we will go with Make Arcane Gem of Insight. Number two. And how much Magicite do we have left? 848. So we're going to take 500 for that, which will give us 348 left. And then this one takes... Oh, does a similar peril? That's not right. Hang on. Take two. Um, unfinished Torn Script takes how much exactly? 250. So we can just about make two pawns into uh, wizards of some description. Now, I wonder if when you write the book, it depends on um, their own personal skills or abilities, maybe? I'm not entirely sure. I'm, I'm, again, I'm just spitballing at this stage. So what have we got? We've got Kinetic Shield, Transfer Mana, Spell Mending, Blood, Rye Ground... I feel almost like we have to make the druid spell, regrow limb. And what's that? 212 unrefined magicite. My boys, I'm sorry, but it's time to go back to the quarry basically forever at this stage. Oh, thank God. Undead Berg actually finally pulling its weight there. The dog is gathering up all the hay. We're going to drop it in the freezer. This was sort of the whole point, right? He's going to drop it hopefully in the freezer. Yeah, there we go. God, I thought it was taking the stockpile zone. Nice. Okay, so that's going to allow us to make more ice, and then in turn we can actually start refrigerating our food. But honestly, we barely lost anything there. We're still up to 30,000 food, since it's just an insane amount. Right, so the hay is getting planted. Hopefully they'll start... I love, the... I love that these guys can just work non-stop around the clock. That's so cool. Can we also give them a bit of a buff? Um, cheating death does what? Reduce the maintain undead by 10%. Uh, Hasten undead increases movement speed. Man, that's so good. We need to go for this one next. Honestly, actually, maybe clarity first. Increased mana recovery rate so we can actually have more of the damn things might be a better idea. Anyway, this is... I'm really liking this undead system. I wish we'd have found this uh, out about this a long, long time ago. 
And I feel like the other arcane gem of insight that Potts has just finished there has to go to Patches, one of our other original OG pawns. Original OG, that doesn't really make much sense, but OG pawns there. So we're going to give him that one. And then what we do is we have our boy Potts making an unfinished torn script. He's already on it. He's beat me to it, my boy. Right, so then we get Patches. Hey, Patches, could you come back over here a second? We're going to turn you into a wizard. You know, not only, only that minor thing. We're just going to make you an incredibly powerful magical being. Right, go ahead and drop that. Write all your experiences in this one and then read it. And boom. Nothing happened, though. Um, chance of failure, maybe? Literally nothing happened? Oh, I didn't tell him to pick it up, did I? Oh, I told him to pick it up. Okay, thank God. Ooh. All right, Patches. Uh, where are you, my friend? All right, put that on the floor. Read. Oh, he's a warlock. God damn it, we've already got a freaking warlock. Fine, okay, you know what? Warlocks seem pretty good. Good offensive capabilities, some good support abilities as well, so I can't complain too much about that. Can we get these goddamn corpses out here? He's over to one dead bird, for Christ's sake. Red dragons have appeared in this area. Now, with the red dragon hide... Oh my god, there's two of them. With the red dragon hide, we can make some absurdly powerful armor, can't we? So we've, we've seen this before. Red dragon scales give... Like, 700% armor, 600% against blunts, 800% against heat. I almost feel like we don't have a choice but to hunt these. By not hunting them, we are depriving ourselves of some really, really, really good gear. Now, we do have catapults, don't forget. So if they come within range of the catapults, they are going to get absolutely... Oh, you fools. They are going to get absolutely toasted. Bonnet Bigly, man the catapult. Patches, man the catapult. Let's take them out, boys. Now, if they go for revenge, we probably want to be on these. Because as we recall last time, these dragons are absurdly strong. Like, ridiculously strong. So I'm thinking... I'm thinking... Am I thinking? I don't think I'm thinking this through, but we're going to do it right. You get on you. Get on you. Oh, we can rearm these crossbows. Are they really that low already? Hang on. Um, oh, no, they're, they're fine. They're absolutely fine. It's just the game being a little bit uh, a little bit picky about it. Right, get on the crossbows first and foremost. If we can at least maim them with our with our catapults, we should be good. Because that's obviously going to be a shock tactic there. Right, Jimbo, get on this one. Mark, get on uh, this one. Jim Morrison on this one, and say Nigel on this one, and that should be a pretty decent lineup, I think. Is that everybody on a crossbow? Uh, Nan Ballista, there we are. All right, good work, team. Hey, that's looking good. All right. Um, where the fuck are they? Oh, my God. Are they out of the range of the crossbows now? You big shit. Okay. Um, so, clearly, here's what we do. Um, we take Reginald Elkip, and we say, hey, Elkip, you know those dragons? Yeah, go and, go and taunt them for us. Go, go and piss them off. Really, hopefully we can get them one at a time, rather than have to fight both at once. Get careful. Spiked. Ah, oh, shit. Red Dragon Revenge. Run. Oh my god, run. Um, okay. Here we go. This is going to be fun, I think. Or horrible. Either way. Alright, crossbows. Get ready, team. We can man the catapults, but we can't... I don't know how they work, because the ammo is too far away. Um, it doesn't matter. Honestly, let's think this through. Let's switch out. Who has... Oh man, let's switch you out. You come stand here for Patches. Patches man that one. Alright, here we go. Right. The blister away. 3% damage. Oh, God. Oh, this is horrible. Okay. Um. Okay, let me think. Let me think. Let me think. This could be horrible. Okay. Bl blast them. Too late. Too slow. Oh, God. Alright, move back because these things kill instantly. Move back, move back, move back, move back, move back. Bonnet Bigly, Bonnet Bigly, Bonnet Run. Okay. Now, as I recall, last time we fought these things, we literally just kited them around over and over and over. So here's the plan. Here's the plan. Watch this, ready? Watch this. Oh, your boy gave him the sled. Watch this. Oh, Jim Morrison, he's been grabbed. Okay, we're fine. Croesus. Croesus, not like this. Croesus, not like this. Okay. Uh, oh, fuck. This is going to be... All right, lure him out into the field. Croesus, come, come, come down and round. Down and round, Crosses. There we go. Right, get out there as well. This is going to be weird, but trust me on this one. What we're going to do is we're going to cut them around in circles above the ballista, and it's going to be a goddamn firing range. Now, I'm kind of hoping that Reginald Elkip, Jim Morrison, and Bonnet also don't get shot here. Right, back down again. Again together. Move across. Oh, Elkip's been grabbed. That's terrible. Like, that's awful. Okay, uh, I mean, of all the people to get grabbed, he's probably the best one. Wave of fear. Push him back, push him back, push him back. Oh, God. Did that work? fucking work. Oh my god, this is horrible. Is that a grenade? <laughs> Elkip, you need to get out of there, friend. You need to run. He's gonna die. He's absolutely gonna die and I can't stop him from fucking... He's down. Okay, well, he's not dead. That's better than that's better than something, I guess. Right, keep kiting him around. Kite him around. Kite him around. Oh, they're fast. 
Oh, they're very quick. How are we doing? 90%? It's 86%? We're going to be here for decades. We're going to be here for... Bonnet's been captured. Bonnet is about to die. You're about to see the end of Bonnet, Bigley. I'm telling you right now, this is the end. Bonnet? Uh, what can you do? What can you do? Fog of Torment? Fog of Torment. Um... Someone shot Bonnet with a fucking grenade. Nigel, can you hit him with a heal? Oh my god, can we, uh... Right, draft up. Get him over here. Can we hit him with a heal from here? We can. He's up on his feet. Uh, Nigel, you're gonna have to keep healing my boy. Um, Alkip still down. This is horrible. These red dragons are, st are just too strong. They're, they're just absurdly strong. They're just ridiculously powerful. Right, um... Let me take control, thank you. Right. <laughs> this is ridiculous, look at this shit. It might be better, actually. Rather than me trying to man, or rather than me trying to move, Death Croesus. We could resurrect him with the resurrect spell. I feel like we need to craft a resurrect spell first and foremost. Now what I'm gonna do, Jim Morrison retreating to here. Oh my god. Oh, Bonnet. Oh, Bonnet. You fool. Jim Morrison, keep running, keep running, keep running. Bonnet Bigley has been captured once again by these fucking dragons. Death Bonnet Bigley. These fucking dragons are so stupid. Why are they so powerful? This isn't even fun. Okay, sure, whatever. Sonic Storm, we can bring them back, so I'm not too concerned. Well, I mean, I, mean, I am concerned. Right. Here's the plan. A hide. Faster. Good work, team. Please don't walk through the door. No, nope, that's not what I wanted. That's not what I wanted at all. Oh, God, this is a massacre. This is a massacre. This is horrible. Draft. Run. Okay. Not ideal. Uh, pull them back into this room. Maybe we can shoot them with the others. Who's being attacked? I don't even know anymore, dude. This is this is terrible. This is just the worst case scenario. These fucking dragons are absurd. Whoever made them needs a serious talking to, honestly. Right, search and destroy. Search. And, let's just pray. Let's just swing and pray. I don't think we're gonna survive this. I think I think this is gonna be a full colony wipe. Yeah, look at this. Yep, there we go. It's happening. I mean, what can I do? I'm, what can I do? Just sit here and watch. Half of them are trapped. Um, Sonic Blast we can't do. Some defensive pylon? What the fuck is it? It's not going to help. This thing has so much health. Just a ridiculous amount of health. Potts is dead. Mark is dead. This is it. This is the end. Two dragons are going to take out the whole colony. I can't believe it. I cannot believe how freaking powerful these things are. Egas is dead. Like, this is not just a raid. This is like... <laughs> I don't know what to do. I just don't know what... That's it. Jim Morrison, he's gone. Goodbye, team. It was nice knowing you all. Jimbo, Bricko, Moss. And just give up, honestly. Just let it fucking devour you, my dude. Moss is down. Man. That's absurd. Oh, that's actually ridiculous. Like, it's, it's just unbelievable. Like, the other dragon was very, very powerful. These are just... Oh, thank you, Pig, for at least trying there. Okay. Um, I mean, these last two are kind of somehow surviving. I mean, I don't entirely know how, but they seem... Oh, there we go. Right. And now for the last one. Boom. Bricko is dead. And that's everything. We are done. I mean, obviously, I was going to reload that. Come on now. The second I saw those, how powerful those dragons were. I mean, we knew how powerful they were, but I didn't quite internalize how ridiculous their armor was. I thought at this stage of the game, right, we, we know they were incredibly powerful from last time. But since then, we've got so much more gear, so many more colonists, so much more power, ballista, crossbows, defenses, everything. And they're still disgustingly OP. So if we ever see those things again, fuck them, honestly. Not touching them. I mean, this is an additional mod, so I, I did go out and find a dragon mod. I didn't realize that the, the, the dwarf mod added it. So clearly those could do some work, I think. I, I, maybe a little bit of a nerf, and this is also could do with a bit of a nerf. Um, Man, that was insane. Yeah, no more dragons. I'm, I'm off the dragon train. If we see it from now on, we'll just, you know, invite them in, feed them, and send them on their way. So we've got these dimensional pockets. We've got a granite arcane capacitor. We've also got a granite dimensional pocket. We've also got this portal as well, which is cool, but that's, that's something for later on. Um, so these things, supposedly, you can charge them up with mana and then come and grab it from a later time. So it's basically like a mana battery, right? So what we could do while we're just at peace, while we're making farms, while we're building a very nice church, I'd like, like to add. Um, what we could do is just have them charging batteries because they're not using their mana for, especially the offensive mages, right? Like the warlocks and, and the magic missile boys. 
Those boys could be charging mana, and then when we actually need it during combat, we can siphon it off. Now, there's also this one here, the Granite Arcane Dimensional Pocket, which covers a massive area, like a fucking huge area. But apparently, it's slower than this one. So I'm, I'm tempted to build a couple of these. I don't really know where to build them. Oh my god, they're kind of expensive, too. Um, I'm going to build one. <laughs> I'm build one smack bang in the middle of town, and we'll see what it's like, and then maybe we'll judge from there whether or not it's worth building another one. We'll sort of see how it works, right? Because I want to build it close to this gate so that when we've got, a, like, a lineup of troops here, um, they can, you know, siphon some mana if they need to fire another magic missile or whatever. So we'll wait and see how or, or what this is. And then, of course, there's this ridiculous portal as well. Instantly travel between two portals apparently requires a ridiculous amount of magic to keep moving, but that's what I want to do with this room. If we ever set up a second colony, if we ever need to travel to a different colony, maybe one that's in, in enemy lands to quickly teleport over there for supply lines, whatever, that could be fairly useful. But for now, maybe not. Maybe we should ignore that for for the time being. Let's finish things up today with a quest. So we've got over here the outpost, the faction, the Shadow Crew, uh, the Coastal Haven of the Elves want this destroyed. They're going to give us the Dwarf King's Crown, the Bearskin, Galadrim, uh, basically crap. We don't really want that. It's 3,900 worth. We've got, obviously, this one here, Transfer Mana, like lots of different spells, probably more worth our while, to be honest with you. We've got the Blue Plain Covenant want this one destroyed. Torn Script Water. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Torn Script Water is to teach one of our pawns to be a water mage, right? I might go and get that one, because that's a guaranteed class that we've never seen before. So I might I might actually go for this one. Um, we don't know what's there. It's just an outpost, a small guarded outpost. It's not going to be huge, because we've seen some outposts already, right? So what I want to test firstly is whether or not the undead still die when we send them out in the caravan. So the first caravan we formed, they died. Now, I think that is because Bonnet Bigley wasn't with them. Obviously, it would make sense that the, 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 the undead would die when they're far away from their necromancer friend. So we're going to try and do that then. So let's go for, who is it, Gloin, uh, Tawley, and the dog. And then we'll send, they don't need food, surely? Wait, do the, the undead need fucking food? That doesn't seem right. Um, Bonnet, the dog, oh my god, they do. Oh, the undead need feeding. If you send them in caravans, that's a bit shitty. Okay, and then we'll also send, um, you know, any sort of... Oh, shit. Oh, nothing's trained anymore. God damn it. Oh, well, it doesn't matter too much. This is only a test anyway. This is not what I'm going to send out. So we'll just accept that for now. Um, I won't even bother picking them any food because we're just going to send them to the tile across just to see if they do despawn. No food and become hungry very quickly. Well, they'll probably just eat Bonnet Bigly, won't they? All right, here we go. The moment of truth. Let's see whether or not our undead are actually capable of going out on an adventure, whether or not they'll just die instantly. They can go out if they're with Bonnet Bigley. Right, okay, that's that's really good. Let's just make sure. We'll send them a little bit further away from base because they, they haven't really got anywhere yet. Um, if they can, then obviously that's great news. I, I kind of assume that'd be the case, right? That they, yeah, no, they're, now they're traveling with Bonnet Bigley, they don't despawn. That's really good because it means our undead army can actually happen without having to worry about, you know, getting them all geared up, sending them out to the map, and then instantly dropping down dead. That's cool. Right, come back home because you boys are definitely not going out. Instead, we're going to send a bit more of a tanky caravan. So clearly we are going to send... Um, who do we want to send, more importantly? Uh, Edril, Reginald Elkip, classic. We want to send probably Insane Nigel for the heals. Um, you know what? I'm going to actually go and take a look at all the character pages just so I can get... So so Elkip, definitely. Insane Nigel, definitely. Jim Morrison, definitely. Um, Mark, I'd like to send to help train up his Warlock powers, and we'll take Jimbo. Jimbo, Mark, Jim. So, so Jim, Jim, Mark, Nigel, Reggie. Jim, Jim, Mark, Nigel, Reggie. Right. Jim. Jim. Mark. Nigel, uh, where is the insane Nigel, where are you, there you are, Nigel and Reggie Elkip, right, okay, that's a pretty good team, I think, that's a hell of a team, to be honest with you, take the jerked meats, take the dried berries, we'll rot in 9.1 days, I don't think we're gonna be away for that long, so we'll just take 20 of those, um, oh, I wanna take it up to the amount it'll rot, it's a shame there's not a button for that, um, so let's go for, like, what, 35, oh my god, 66 is way too much, 35, um, slightly less than that, there we go, right, that's it, 30, 30.5 tiles per day. Now, unfortunately, we don't have enough animals for them to mount, which is obviously a massive shame. I really should start work on that as soon as possible. When was it? This one? Uh, Torn script water. Yeah, that's what we want to go for. 1.1 day to get there. 1.1 day to get back. It's going to take less than three days. So we've got more than enough food. Off you go, team. Now, this is kind of taught me a valuable lesson as well. We need to keep our animals being trained. Um, why aren't they being trained, can I ask? Bonnet needs to prioritize that. Oh, because there's only one person capable of training them. Uh, so anybody who's at least got even the slightest bit of skill, I'm just going to have them training the animals, honestly, because it's just never going to get, ha it's, it's never going to get done otherwise. Hey, there we go. Right, so, uh, apparently in the tab there's magic. It did say that the, 
Maybe because I've got this additional job smart, it doesn't work, but it does say that pawns assigned to magic will act, will automatically come and charge it up. So we can actually manually set people to come and charge it up. So it's, it works basically like I said, right? Um, when we're not using magic, we can try and fill this thing up, and then when we actually need it, we can send them over to come and drain it. So that, that's kind of a cool little feature. Um, again, very useful during raids and that type of thing. If we, if we spend all our magic on abilities, we can quickly suck up some more and fire off some more magic missiles. Um, are our graves seriously awful again? Oh my god, they are. On Deadburg, um... Very much overfilled at this stage. Um, can you boys come and dig me a new grave then as soon as possible? Thank you very much. Let's just go ahead and draft and draft them. Nice. Okay, let's get these corpses out of the way as well because they will start to rot if they're left out in the world. Apparently the graves they should be able to keep for a very, very long time. So we don't have to worry about that too much. Uh, can we get them hauled urgently? Did I accidentally set this to high priority and I preferred? Oh no, I know what I need to do. I need to copy the uh, the settings over. So we need to go over here, set this to critical. Human-like corpses, absolutely fine. And then if we pick them now... Oh, no. Oh, now they'll just go and do it. Okay, that's better. Next episode, we're going to start out with a bang. We're going to start with a big old raid and hopefully get this water script and maybe turn someone into a water mage. I mean, now that we know how the arcane system works, everybody's going to be a wizard in no time. I think this is going to be really fun. Let me guys, let me know what you guys think about having the Speed 4 mod enabled pretty much all the time. Um, mainly, I, th I think it's actually a, a big benefit for this, this, this series now where we're basically just waiting for raids to turn up. Um, where we're doing a lot of long-term tasks, lots of long-term building, long-term gathering of resources. Like, we're trying to get a shit ton of magicite now to turn people into things. We're, we're basically just killing time. So hopefully with Speed 4, we can get things done a lot quicker again. If you guys aren't a big fan of it and would like me to play on the regular speed, let me know, of course, and I will uh, disable it accordingly. Let me know what you think of the shorter research times as well. Hopefully, it's going to get a, pretty more, um, a bit more interesting towards the end of the series. And as I explained in CK2, but I know some of you guys might not watch that, the new Patreon list aren't available yet. So for those of you who have patronized over the past sort of a couple of weeks, you might not be on the list yet. Fortunately, it's just Patreon service has been pretty bad over the past few days, but I think they've got everything fixed now. So hopefully by the end of today, we should have something new. And that means a big shout out to all of those guys. Big Dick Timmy, Tom Terra 18, Harik Lucas Holting, Jacob Alexander Fenton, Sean Thornton, Loris, Hey Dog Sedini, Necrofilin, Asuna Kirito, Fukuno Vasquez, I'm the Lizard King, Josh Lindine, Tesla, Michael Mullen, Tyler Birch, Pavis Presley, Logan Thorne, Conspired C, Orcs Wolf, Average Gamer 419, Escape Crosses, Vacuous Backers, and Tim Bragg. Thank you all for your support on Patreon. It means a lot during these troublesome YouTube times of January. I suppose it's technically February now. Um, but, but still, you know. Probably, probably stick around. Stay a while and listen. And Nathaniel Limburg, Euphrates, Jimmy, Quasar Fox, Jack Allen, Gabriel Van Ders, Luan and Thomas, Nathan Flores, Euron DeVries, Duncan217, Seth McDougall, Joseph Beer, Jordan Camel, Harry McGowan, Will Wade, Chris, Sir Thor the Swede, The Sage, Asro, Nick, Frazier, Brennan, Kevin Saunders, Betamus Max, Insane Pickle, Adam Person, Eagle Cossack, Hajjudimar, Noah Gallimore, Panther Bell, and Alpha Scuff. Thank you guys as well.